officially a storage engineer at SafeSpring. Um, nothing about this demo has anything to do with storage, um, quite the opposite, actually. Um, but somehow I got involved into this project. Um, but as a company, we have a, I think it's about eight or nine OpenStack clusters in different data centers throughout Scandinavia. Um, and all of this um, traditionally gets managed by a lot of Ansible code, um, including creating new projects, onboarding users, um, stuff like that. Um, that doesn't make people very happy. So what we got into now is building a um, self-service API through which we can manage um, users centrally and expose that API to our end users instead of trying to expose the full OpenStack API to them, um, since that also doesn't make people happy. Um, so what we've ended up with here is a, um, is the, is a central HTTP API, and then we use NAT as a message bus. Um, and through this API, we support both OKD um, clusters, um, but also OpenStack, so the OpenStack operator, which this will focus on. Um, and we can connect multiple OpenStack clusters to the self-service API um, and do all of the management through that. But then what we ran into, um, we generally don't have a lot of um, lab environments or staging environments for OpenStack clusters since it's such a complicated project to set up. Um, but during development of this, you want to test against something. So what we started out with is um, spin up a virtual machine, install OpenStack on it using Kola Ansible. Um, so Kola is the OpenStack project that creates OC containers, and then Kola Ansible deploys those containers onto nodes, and they have a setup to do that on a single instance. Um, and then we build a pipeline around that, and that took us 30 minutes for every run. Um, so people were a little bit happier, but still not very happy. Um, the, the throughput times were just very slow. You make a change and it always feels somewhere at the end and then it's a single line fix and then you have to wait another 30 minutes. Um, so that experience wasn't great. And um, so what we ended up with is still using Cola Ansible, but then template um, the already done setup and use that to spin up a VM. And then with some caching, that gave us a virtual machine in about two minutes, a minute and a half. Um, so that was already happier. We were doing this with Pulumi to spin it up. And then we got the pipeline would just be like, OK, we'll sleep for 30 seconds now and then hope everything works. Um, and then, of course, that's very flaky. So eventually, what we ended up with is the I think this is the right site. Yep, it's a, we're using Gitia with Gitia Actions, um, and what we're using here is Pulumi to spin up. Um, so to Pulumi to spin up the VM I was talking about. Due to the templating, we ran into all kinds of DNS issues since OpenStack wants you to register the DNS endpoint you're going to authenticate at. And that's going to be static. So if you do that after the spin up, um, it takes time to, to fix that again. So the pipeline got slower. Um, so eventually, what we did is through Pulumi, we get an IP address. Um, and then Solomon helped me a lot to set up a tunnel from the host to the OpenStack cluster. And with that, we could actually make all of this work. Um, so we get an OpenStack instance here. It takes a minute. Then we use Cloud in it. Which it's a nice feature. There's apparently um, Cloud in it um, status test as wait, which will make your command prompt just wait until all your Cloud in it stuff is done. Um, so we do some some last state finalizing there. Um, so we wait for that, and once we have it, we have a fully configured OpenStack instance with all the com components running, like Nova and Keystone and Neutron, um, on a single node. But you basically have the have a full OpenStack cluster. 
that you can work against. Um, and then I'm going to switch to my screen to the terminal. Um, let's see, it's this one. So as you might have seen in general, I had a couple of um, issues when I was going to prepare this demo. Um, somebody broke the complete environment. So I was planning on doing a recording um, of the demo in case stuff broke, but all that time went into fixing the environment. So I'm just going to hope that everything works out of the box here. Um, but the last step of testing all of this is pinning up our dagger um, main.go. And all what this does is pin up Postgres, pin up NATs, and spin up our HTTP API, start up our OpenStack operator, which connects to the OpenStack virtual machine. And then it finishes with starting our tests. And generally, this takes about, I'd say, four minutes um, to fully start up. I'm going to guess there's already some cache now um, since I've tested it a couple of times. Um, so one of the things with Dagger we ran into is the output with Dagger functions is really nice. Um, but since we are starting like four or five background services here, we're having a lot of logs um, running throughout each other. Um, and the overview that you get from the uh, Dagger Cloud I agree with it. It's really nice because if you look at this um, in the terminal, there's you have a really hard time to figure out what's going on um, other than that some stuff is running. But if we look at the Dagger Cloud screen here, well, let me resize that window a bit. <laughs> Everything is a lot nicer. So what we see is we start up a mock OAuth server to authenticate against. We have Postgres running. We have NATs here. Um, we have the self surface logger component. This is where we start up the tunnel to the OpenStack cluster. Um, this is our actual OpenStack operator running here. So I'm going to check. And you can see that the tests are running. So we're creating OpenStack projects now. Uh, some tests are checked that we're unable to create a project. Um, and then the Dagger Cloud um, traces make it really easy to debug these issues across all those different components we have. Um, since you can see exactly where stuff is, where time is being spent, um, where it's going wrong, and we can cross relate. Uh, um, outputs of that. So we have our tests running here. This always takes a bit. Um, so one of the things we're also working on now is we have this working against OpenStack. We spin up the OpenStack virtual machine with Pulumi. Um, we're still working on integrating that into Dagger as well. So we can actually have people um, very easily create their own environment. Um, so they can just test this locally as well. And then next to that, um, we're also working on spinning up OKD in a single node. Um, virtual machine so we can test both components for the API at the same time. Um, and normally I wouldn't know how we would have built this. Um, and then we came across Dagger, which made this way easier because before um, people tried to do this with a Docker Compose file and then it would work locally. Um, and then people threw it in the pipeline and the pipeline broke um, because somebody put a file somewhere in the wrong location. Um, and then this solved all these kind of problems. Um, so, so far, it's been a really great experience. Yeah, as you can see here, the tests have succeeded. Um, 
So the pipeline is finished. All these services are stopped. There's nothing left here. And if we do spin it up again now, it's going to be way faster thanks to all the just the caches that just work out of the box. Um, now it's we're really happy with with what Dagger is so far. Um, we're hoping to be able to use Dagger functions soon, um, but with us being on Gatia, not on GitHub, we can't really use our code to pull in modules from there. And so we're waiting on that. But so far, we're really happy with the experience. And that's it for me. Mm -hmm.